What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33. And the word of Yahuwah, the word of the Lord, came to me, saying, and again, this is Jesus in the Old Testament, going to the prophets, giving them the word, words to speak. And the word of Yahuwah came to me again, or came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the sons of your people, and say to them, If I bring a sword upon a land, and the sons of your people, um, a lot of the time when it references the children of the nations, it's referring to the end time generations. And we're going to see a little bit of uh, that later. But these are prophecies of these are end time prophecies as well, as well. and uh, a lot of people use these the scripture here in Isaiah 33 the watchman scripture but a lot of people don't carry out what it says a lot of people don't preach repentance people claim to be watchmen warning about the day of the Lord, about the rapture, saying the rapture is about to happen and believe, believe in Jesus. But a lot of people don't tell people to turn from their sins, turn from their wickedness. And that's what we're going to see here in chapter 33 of Ezekiel. And the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the sons of your people and say to them, if I bring a sword upon a land, and the people of the land take one man from among them to make them make him their watchman, knowing the army's coming, knowing the uh, that trouble's coming, and they make someone the watchman to watch out, watch from the wall, the top of the walls, to um, watch for the enemies coming. If I bring a sword upon a land and the people take one man from among them and make him their watchman and he sees the sword coming upon the land and blows the trumpet and warns the people then he who hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning and a sword comes and takes him away his blood will be on his own head. So if if you get warned if you're just ignoring all these warnings that trouble is coming, that the end days are upon us, and you don't take heed and don't get ready, your blood's going to be on your on your own head. You had people warning you. He hears the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood will be on himself. But if he had taken warning, he would have delivered his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet and the people are not warned and a sword comes and takes a person from them, he is taken away in his iniquity and his sin. But his blood will be, I will require from the watchman's hand. So if we as watchmen, first off, like I said, we have to be preaching repentance, pre preaching to for people to turn from their sins and believe in Jesus turn from their turn from their sins and believe in Jesus for the salvation for the forgiveness of your sins but most people just say the rapture's coming believe in Jesus and that's it Again, but if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, we have to sound the alarm. We have to let people know if we see the trouble coming, if we see the day of the Lord about to happen, if we see judgment coming upon this world and upon this land, if we see that millions of people, billions of people are going to die, we need to warn them. We need to play our part and warn them if we know that we're living in these days. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and a sword comes and takes away, 
takes a person from them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will, I will require... I will require from the watchman's hand. Now as for you, son of man, speaking to Ezekiel, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. So you will hear a message from my mouth and give them warning from me. And unfortunately, a lot of people these days aren't appointed by God to be watchmen. A lot of people, a lot of individuals are false. There's a lot of false prophets among us. There's a lot of Nephilim and fallen angels among us. As watchmen, as teachers, as prophets, we have to be careful. I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. So you will hear a message from my mouth and you will give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you will surely die. And you do not speak to warn the wicked man from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity and his sin. But his blood I will require from your hand. But if you on your part warn a wicked man to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he will die in his iniquity, in his sin. But you have delivered your life. We have to warn them. But if we don't warn them, if we know that people are living in wickedness and are going to be destroyed, if we know people are going to be cast into the lake, lake of fire when this judgment comes, or after this judgment, um, after this earthly judgment, Everyone's going to stand before God, and we, we know they're going to be cast into the lake of fire if they don't turn from their sins. We have to warn them. We have to sound the alarm. And if they don't listen, they just ignore it and laugh about it. Their blood's on their own head. But if we, if we don't warn them, if we don't preach the gospel... And warn the people of the coming judgment. Then it's on our hands. But if you on your part warn a wicked man to turn from his way. And he does not turn from his way. He will die in his iniquity but you have delivered your life. Now as for you son of man. Say to the house of Israel. Thus you have spoken saying. This is uh, what Ezekiel is saying to the house of Israel, or what God is telling him to speak to them. And the house of Israel can represent the whole house. Uh, he was Ezekiel was to the house of Judah, but uh, the house of Israel can represent the whole house or the northern house, which is uh, Christianity, uh, believers. Now, as for you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have spoken saying, Surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we are rotting away in them. How then can we survive? Say to them, As I live, declares the Lord God, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn from your evil ways. Why then will you die, O house of Israel? God wants us all to repent. He wants us all to walk in His ways, to serve Him. And you, son of man, say to your fellow citizens, The righteousness of a righteous man will not deliver him in the day of his transgression. And as for the wickedness of of the wicked, he will not stumble. He will not stumble because of it in the day when he turns from his wickedness. Whereas a righteous man will not be able to live by his righteousness on the day when he commits sin. When I say to the righteous, he will surely live, and he so trusts in his righteousness. 
that he commits iniquity or sin, none of his righteous deeds will be remembered. But in that same iniquity of his which he has committed, he will die. But when I say to the wicked, you will surely die, and he turns from his sin and practices justice and righteousness, if a wicked man restores a pledge, pays back what he has taken by robbery, walks by the statutes which ensure life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins which he has committed will be remembered against him. He has practiced justi justice and righteousness. He shall surely live. Yet your fellow citizens say, The way of the Lord is not right, when it is their own way that is not right. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, then he shall die in it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and practices justice and righteousness, he will live by them. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. God is going to judge, judge, judge us each according to our ways. And none of our ways are good enough to make it to eternal life. But we can lose salvation if we turn back to sin. If we go back in sin. See, the Apostle John said, I'm writing these things to you so that you do not sin. But if you do, if see, we, we're not supposed to live in sin at all. We're not supposed to sin at all. But if you do, because none of us are perfect, but if you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus, the righteous. If we confess our sins, he is just and righteous to forgive us our sins. For our sins. But if we don't confess our sins, if we go back to our old life and just live in sin and don't repent, and the Holy Spirit is telling us, don't do this, turn back, turn back to me, turn back to God, and we don't, and we just keep living in sin. We're grieving the Holy Spirit and eventually will blaspheme the Holy Spirit through intentional sin, intentional rejection of the Holy Spirit, intentional sinning against God. We can blaspheme the Spirit and not have forgiveness again. See, God is a God of mercy. God is a God of patience. But we can push the envelope too far. We can take it too far. And which I thought I've done before. But he never left me. But if I would have stayed in my sin, I believe he would have. I know I grieved the Holy Spirit. But I didn't get to the point of blaspheming the Spirit. Praise God. Praise him for his mercy. God is merciful. God is patient. And he showed me how, how merciful and patient he is. But if we don't... I'm going to go through some other scriptures uh, here in Ezekiel that speak about the same thing. But if we don't turn back, if we don't repent and turn from our sins, if we just live in sin, intentionally rebelling against God, we're going to blaspheme the Spirit and not have forgiveness. God can cast us off and remove Himself from us. We know... Jesus said, many people will say to me on that day, Lord, did we not do this in your name? Did we not do that? Did we not perform miracles in your name and cast out demons? Which you can only do through the Holy Spirit. 
And he said, I will say to them, depart from me, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness or sin. Sin is lawlessness. Lawlessness is sin. Sin is defined by breaking God's commandments. We have to keep his commandments and walk in his ways and not do wrong. Praise him. Now, um, I'm going to take a second and go to some other scriptures that here that say the same, should speak about the same thing. Let's see if it says anything different. Uh, Ezekiel 3 is also uh, similar. I'm going to start in verse 16. At the end of seven days, the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, Son of man, I have appointed you a watchman to the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, warn them from me. Whenever, when I say to the wicked, you will surely die, and you do not warn him, or speak out to warn the wicked from his wicked way that he may live, that the wicked man shall die in his that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you have warned the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, or die from his and he does not turn from turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. See, if you don't, if the wicked man doesn't turn, turn from his wickedness. See, if we go back into sin, we're that wicked man. And if the righteous man turns away, as we're going to see in a minute, if the righteous man turns away and goes back into sin, he, he will die for it. The wages of sin is death. And um, see if we again if we sin we have to repent and do our best to not sin again at all we can't just sin and think it's okay think it's okay to do this or that do a little bit of sin and no it's not okay at all not at all we're supposed to be perfect as our Father in Heaven is perfect. That's what we need to strive for. And if we intentionally sin, we can blaspheme the Spirit and lose our salvation. And matter of fact, I'm going to go over... Let me just go over here now to another scripture in Hebrews. A lot of y'all are probably familiar with this. I believe it's in Hebrews 6. And also Hebrews 10, if I remember right. Let me uh, just pull this. Or maybe it's 4 as well. Now 4 is about the, the rest. We read here in Hebrews 6. Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about the Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God, of instruction about washing and laying on of hands and a resurrection of, de of the dead and eternal judgment. Let us press on to maturity, not these basic things, because uh, we should under this, understand these things as young Christians. And this we will do if God permits. For in the case of those who have once been enlightened, to the truth of the gospel and tasted of the heavenly gift and been made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come and have fallen away it is impossible to renew them again to repentance since again they crucified to themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame See, to fall away, you have to be a part of something. 
You have to be of the faith in order to fall away from the faith. And once we're true believers, once we're really of the faith and truly fall away again, it says it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. Since they again crucified themselves as uh, the Son of God and put him to an open shame. If you uh, completely fall away and go back to your old life and basically blaspheming God by making him look bad. For often, or for the ground that drinks the rain, which often falls on it and brings forth ve vegetation, useful to those for whose sake it is tilled, for God, receives a blessing from God. But if it yields thorns and thistles, it is worthless and close to being cursed, and it ends up being burned. But beloved, we are convinced of better things concerning you, and things that accompany salvation, though we are speaking in this way. And let's see. Let me see if I can find this other this other scripture real quick. I believe it's in Hebrews 10. Then we'll get back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 10, I mean Hebrews 10, verse 26. For if we go on sinning willfully... After receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and of the fury of a fire which will consume, which will consume the adversaries, the lake of fire. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the Spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit. Blaspheme the Spirit. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the, into the hands of the living God. See, none of us are perfect. But if we sin, we have to make sure we repent, we apologize to God, and turn away from that sin right away. Because if we're just, if we go back, if we fall away and go back willfully sinning, saying for, forget God and, and just willfully sinning, not regarding Him, we're going to blaspheme the Holy Spirit and we're going to lose our salvation. Don't do that. Again, in Ezekiel 3, I'm going to read back from verse 16 again. At the end of seven days, the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, Son of man, I have appointed you a watchman to the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, warn them for me. When I say to the wicked... You will surely die, and you do not warn him to speak or speak out to warn the wicked from his wicked way, that he may live. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but the blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you have warned the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered yourself. Again, when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I place an obstacle before him, he will die. Since you have not warned him, he shall die in his sin. And his righteous deeds which he has done shall not be remembered. 
but his blood I will require at your hand. However, if you have warned the righteous man that the righteous should, should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. So this is the warning. I'm warning y'all right now. We can't live in sin. We can't be a part of any of that. He shall, he shall surely live because he took warning and you have delivered yourself. Now I'm going to read out of Ezekiel 18. Then we'll get back to Ezekiel 33 and finish that up. Let's see. I'm going to start here in verse 3. As I live, declares the Lord God, you are surely not going to use this proverb in Israel anymore. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins will die. But if a man is righteous and practices justice and righteousness, and does not eat at the mountain shrines, or lift up his eyes to the house of Israel, or defile his neighbor's wife, or approach a woman during her menstrual period, if a man does not oppress anyone, but restores to the debtor his pledge, does not commit robbery, but gives bread to the hungry, and covers the naked with clothing, if he does not lend money on interest or take increase, if he keeps his hand from iniquity, and executes true justice between man and man, if he walks in my statutes and my ordinances as so to deal faithfully, he is righteous and will surely live, declares the Lord God. See, a lot of people believe that uh, our works have nothing to do with righteousness, and that's not true. Righteousness unto salvation, perfect righteousness, only comes through faith in Jesus. Only. That's the only way to eternal life, is perfect righteousness. Righteousness unto salvation. And that's the only way. That's the only way we can be made right with God. But that doesn't mean that what we do doesn't matter. We're all going to be judged according to our ways. And we need to be living righteously to truly be considered, to truly be right with God. We need to be living righteously to truly be righteous. Not, on, not, righteous, not perfect righteousness, that only, only comes through faith. But it's uh, but true faith results in action. True fault. True faith results in obedience to God. And if someone's sinning, they're demonstrating a lack of true faith. And uh, and committing unrighteousness. And are living unrighteously. So there's still righteousness and unrighteousness that didn't go away with faith that didn't go away with the cross but perfect righteousness righteousness under salvation only comes through faith only comes through sacrifice that the son of god made for us hallelujah then he then back back here in uh, ezekiel 18 then he may have a violent son who sheds blood and who does any of these things to a brother though he himself the father did not do any of these things. That is, he even eats at the mountain shrines and defiles his neighbor's wife, oppresses the poor and the needy, commits robbery, does not restore a pledge, but lifts his eyes up to the idols and commits abomination. He lends money on interest and takes increase. Will he live? He will not live. He has committed all these abominations. He will surely be put to death. His blood will be upon his own head. And God may have... See, God is going to judge us all according to our works. And 
according to our sins. And we may have to be put to death in this life. Some of us may have to be put to death in this life because of our sins. But potentially still have salvation. But through obedience, that might not happen. God blesses and protects his true people. But even with the church of Smyrna in Revelation chapter 2, that's mentioned, they're mentioned as the ones who have to go into captivity and they didn't have a rebuke against them as, as far as false doctrines and lawlessness and that all that stuff that's mentioned in the seven churches or left to first love or anything like that. Um, and even think about the apostles as well. The things that they had to go through. Of course, they weren't perfect, but I'm sure they were obedient to God. Generally, for the most part, at least. We're going to be judged based on our sins. And if we fall away and truly intentionally sin and go back and be rebellious against God, we can blaspheme the Spirit and lose our salvation. That is one of the scariest things in the world that's uh, pretty much the scariest thing in the world I think now behold he has a son who has observed all his father's sins which he has committed and observing does not do likewise he does not eat at the mountain shrines nor lift up his head to the house of Israel I'll just continue. Or lift up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, or defile his neighbor's wife, or oppress anyone, or retain a pledge, or commit robbery. But he gives his bread to the hungry, and covers the naked with clothing. He keeps his hand from the poor, and does not take interest or increase, but executes my ordinances, and walks in my statutes. He will not die for his father's iniquity. He will surely live. As for his father... Because he practiced extortion, robbed his brother, and did, was, did, what, did what was not good among his people, behold, he will die for his iniquity. Yet you say, why should the son bear the punishment for the father's iniquity, when the son has practiced justice and righteousness, and has observed, and has observed all my statutes and done them, he shall surely live. The person who sins will die. The son will not bear, bear the punishment for the father's iniquity, nor will the father bear the punishment for the son's iniquity. The righteousness of the righteous will be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked will be upon himself. But if the wicked man turns from all his sins, which he has committed, and observes all my statutes, and practices justice and righteousness, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions which he has committed will not be remembered against him. Because of his righteousness which he has practiced, he will, he will live. Do I have any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, rather that he should turn from his ways and live? Rather than that he should have turned from his ways and live? God doesn't want the wicked to be destroyed. He wants the wicked to repent and not be destroyed. But God is a God of justice and he has to destroy the wicked he he's a god of perfection a god of righteousness he has to has to destroy the wicked but he doesn't want anyone to be wicked he wants all to come to repentance and seek him but most don't and it's going to be even with the, all the warnings and it's going to be the, to their own detriment but when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that a wicked man does, will he live? All his righteous deeds which he has done will not be remembered for his treachery which he has committed, and his sin, sin which he committed. For them he shall die. He will die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not right? Is it not your ways that are not right? 
When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies because of it, for his iniquity which he has committed, he will die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from his wickedness which he has committed, and practices justice and righteousness, he will save his life. We just have to, if we slip up, we need to get right back on the straight and narrow path. Because he is considered and turned away from all his transgressions which he had committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. But the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not right. Are my ways not right, O house of Israel? Is it not your ways that are not right? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, each according to his conduct. And we see this in many scriptures. We see this in the book of Revelation. We see this in... Um, uh, it's either Peter or Paul. I can't recall the exact scripture right now. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions so that your iniquity may not become a stumbling block to you. Cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God. Therefore, repent and live. And man, God repeated it and repeated it and repeated it and repeated it. That means he means it. He really means it. We have to repent. We have to turn from all our wickedness. We need to turn from all our sins. And if we do sin, we need to make sure... Well, first off, we need to make sure we don't sin. We need to make sure we don't even let any thoughts in. When demons throw thoughts in our mind... Unclean thoughts, we need to shut them down. We need to reject them. And reject, the, resist the demons. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist those thoughts. Rebuke them in Yeshua's name. We need to walk in his ways. Back to Ezekiel 33. Verse 21. Now in the twelfth year of our exile, on the fifth of the tenth month, the refugees from Jerusalem came to me, saying, The city has been taken. Now the hand of Yahuwah had been upon me in the evening, before the refugees came. And he opened my mouth at that time, or at the time that they came to me in the morning. So my mouth was open and I was no longer speechless. So for a certain period of time, Ezekiel was speechless when God didn't want him to speak to the people he didn't and get when God wanted him to speak he did then the word of Yahuwah came to me saying son of man they who live in these waste places in the land of Israel are saying Abraham was only one yet he possessed the land so to us who are many the land has been given as a possession Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord God, You eat the meat with the blood in it, and this is also to Jews today, who um, who just think it's their right to the land, who think it's, uh, which God did bring them back in 1948. Some people say that's not the real Jews, and I'm not saying it all is the real Jews, but I'm still, I'm still looking at that myself. But 1948 was Israel coming back into one nation was God's time marker for the final generation, I believe. And see, a lot of people think. See, some people. Be, I don't want to get into anything I don't, I don't really have an understanding on. Uh, a lot of people believe that the Jews in the land aren't real Jews or aren't bloodline Jews, aren't from the tribe of Judah. And that uh, black people are the, are the real Jews. Um, I'm not going to say that's true or not. But even like even a lot of a lot of the people among the black Hebrew Israelites um, 
think that uh, just because of their bloodline, if that's the case, that just because of their bloodline, that uh, uh, I'm not saying everyone thinks this, but that uh, they have an inheritance that uh, that they're automatically pretty much in the kingdom, automatically the people of God. Um, kind of like it's saying here, just like the Jews in the land today, if they are the Jews. Um, believe it's uh, just because of their bloodline. The land is theirs and the things of God are theirs. But, but listen to what God says here. Uh, so again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, they who live in these waste places in the land of Israel are saying, Abraham was only one, yet he possessed the land. So to us who are many, the land has been given as a possession. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, you eat the meat with the blood in it. Lift up your eyes and your to your idols as you shed blood. Should you then possess the land? You eat meat with the blood in it. Lift up your eyes to the idols as you shed blood. Should, should you then possess the land? You rely on your sword. You commit abominations. Each one of you defiles his neighbor's wife. Should you then possess the land? And ultimately, ultimately, the promised land. Because of the bloodline or because of skin color. Because of who you think you are. See, it's about righteousness and really about perfect righteousness, which only comes through faith in Jesus. Although the house of Judah will come to faith, much of the house of Judah will come to faith in Jesus before the millennial reign. For now they reject him. They don't they don't believe he's a Messiah. Thus you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, as I live, surely those who are in the waste places will fall by the sword. And whoever is in the open field, I will give to the beast to be devoured. And those who are in the strongholds and the caves will die of pestilence. And I will make the land a desolation and a waste. And the pride of her power will cease. And the mountains of Israel will be desolate. So no one will pass through. I swear it's got to be spiritual attacks or something. My nose like almost never itches except when I'm doing videos. And that's why I, I just scratch my nose and have a couple of times. My nose never itches except when I'm doing a video. It's crazy. And there's some people actually that believe uh, that can be done through technology as well. I'm not going to say yes or no on that. But what we see here is what's going to happen here in these last days. The mountains of Israel, keep in mind mountains represent kingdoms. The mountains of Israel are kingdoms of Israel. Which the northern house is represented by the United States. The southern house is represented by modern day Israel. And both are, both are going to become a desolation. Like it says about Babylon. Because Babylon represents both. The two daughters make up the mother. And this is stuff that's mentioned. Uh, here in these last days. Will fall by... Those who are in the waste places will fall by the sword. Whoever is in the open field, I will give it to the beast to be devoured. And those who are in the strongholds and the caves will die of pestilence. If we go over here to Revelation chapter 6.
When the lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, saying, Come. I looked and behold an ashen horse, and the one who sat on it had the name Death, and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, there's a sword, famine, plague, that's a pestilence, and the wild animals of the earth. So we just saw three of those here in Ezekiel when speaking about the lands being desolate. That's what happens here in these last days when the seals begin to open and when the tribulation starts. Thus you, shall, thus you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, As I live, surely those who are in the waste places will fall by the sword, and whoever is in the open field I will give to the beast to be devoured, and those who are in the strongholds and the caves will die of pestilence. I will make the land a desolation and a waste, and the pride of her power will cease, and the mountains of Israel will become will be desolate, so no one will pass through. Then they will know that I am Yahuwah, the, the Lord, when I make the land a desolation and a waste because of all their abominations which they have committed. But as for you, son of man, your fellow citizens who talk about you by the walls and in the doorways of the houses, speak to one another, each to his brother, saying, Come now, hear what the message is which comes forth from the Lord, from Yahuwah. They come to you as people come and sit before you as my people and hear your words, but they do not do them. For they do the lustful desires expressed by their mouth, and their heart goes after their gain. Behold, you are to them like a sensual song by one who has a beautiful voice and plays well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not practice them. So when it comes to pass, as it surely will, then they will know that a prophet has been in their midst. So when this comes to pass, people will know the truth of the Word of God and that He has sent people to warn them that He has sent His servants to warn the people, to call people to repent. But unfortunately, as it says here, people listen but don't act. People hear the message, but don't follow. Don't follow through in obedience to God. Let's not be like that. I pray that anyone that, and I will pray that anyone, I pray right now, Lord, Lord, uh, I pray that whoever listens to this message will take heed to your word, will repent, will turn from all their sins and do their best to never sin ever again. And if they do, that they will turn right back to you in repentance and not ever live in any type of sin. We know your word is true. Thank you, praise you. I pray this message will be heard and will be followed through. Let us not be like the people who you're speaking about here in your word that hear the message and don't obey. Let us be obedient. I pray that whoever listens to this mes message will either come to faith or be strengthened in faith and that we will follow you with all our heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yah. Yeshua's name. Amen. Let's follow God fully. Let's follow Him with all our heart. Let's avoid sin at all costs. And Jesus was serious when he said what he said when he was 
when he was demonstrating the seriousness of sin. Sin is that serious. That if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's more important to avoid sin than to have your hand or your eye. That's how important it is to avoid sin. Let's serve God with all our heart. Repent. Turn away from your wickedness. Turn to God. Repent. Turn to Him. Turn for Him. Turn to Him for salvation. Walk in His ways. And if you're struggling with something, ask Him. Pray that God will help you to overcome. And He will. God wants you to walk in His ways. God wants you to be obedient to Him. But if we, but again, if we go back and live in sin, if we go back and fall away and live in intentional sin, rebellion against God, we're going to eventually blaspheme His Spirit and lose our forgiveness, lose our salvation. That's one of the that's just that's, that's the scariest thing in the world. As a believer, that's the scariest thing in the world. Let us not do that. Let us not be that. Let's walk in all his ways and serve him with all our heart. Brothers and sisters, let's be ready. Repent and walk in his ways. If you commit a sin, turn from it immediately. But let's not commit sin. Let's not commit any sin. Let's walk in his ways perfectly. Let's do our best to do that. And we can do that for the most part. So let's do it. Let's be ready. Let's spread the gospel, brothers and sisters. Let's warn the people of the coming judgment. Let's warn the people of the judgment of God. Of what's going to happen to them if they don't turn from their sin. If they don't turn to Jesus for salvation. They're going to be destroyed. Let's warn them. Let's sound the alarm. Let's warn the people about the last days. About judgment coming to this land. Let's tell them about the way out. Let's tell them. Let's warn them. Let's sound the alarm. If we don't, who will? And if we know and we don't warn them, their blood's on our hands. Let's do all we can. Let's serve God with all our heart. Let's be ready. Let's make sure we have a pure heart, a pure mind, because we can sin with our heart and sin with our mind. Let's make sure we have no lustful thoughts or anything like that. It's overcome. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. It's walking all his ways. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. Turn to Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul. God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom. And none of us are perfect and that's why we can't earn our way to the kingdom of heaven. We can't earn our way to eternal life. The punishment for sin is death. That's the second death of body and soul in a lake of fire. Everyone's going to be resurrected one day and stand before God in judgment. And if you haven't had your sins forgiven, you're going to be thrown into the lake of fire for permanent death of body and soul. And because we can't earn it, we can't earn our way to eternal life. That's why Jesus came. Jesus lived a perfect life. He faced the same temptations and trials and tribulations that we faced and lived a perfect life, committed no sin, did nothing wrong in his life. He lived perfect. And in his perfection, he stood in our place and hung on the cross. That's the death that we deserve. He took on the punishment for us, made the sacrifice for us. He paid the penalty for our sins. He paid the debt for our sins. So that through faith in him, we receive forgiveness of sins. Because we can't have... That's the only way to have our sins forgiven. It's through faith in Him and the sacrifice that He made. He paid the penalty for our sins on the cross. So it's through faith. The free gift of God 
through faith in him. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose from the grave three days later. And you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, to change you. And you're truly willing to serve him. Truly willing to submit your life to him and, and do what he wants. You gotta, you gotta agree. You gotta, you gotta agree. You gotta acknowledge that God is right. We are wrong, and we need our sins forgiven. And call out to Him, ask Him to forgive you, and He will. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit, and He'll give you eternal life. The Holy Spirit will change you. The Holy Spirit will help you understand the Bible, will help you understand the world and how to walk in His ways. And you will want to. You won't care what anybody else thinks. You'll want to walk in His ways. Give your life to Jesus Christ, the only way to eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of mind or change of heart, to truly turn, to truly decide, to change direction, to turn from your wickedness, and turn to God for salvation. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. That's the end of Ezekiel 33. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.